Hey guys, and welcome to Learn Shade. My name is John, I'm co-founder of Two Lives Left, and co-creator of Shade and Codia. In this video series, I'm going to teach you how to use Shade, our node-based shader creation tool for iOS. We'll start with the basics, how to navigate the UI, create nodes, and make a very basic shader that you can use in either Codia or Unity. We'll start by opening Shade. When you first open Shade, you'll be presented with a document browser where you can create, delete, rename, and open Shade documents. Up on the top right, you can also access a series of examples, showing you some of the things you can make in Shade. We'll start by pressing the new shader button on the navigation bar. This brings up a menu with different templates you can use. For now, just pick blank. The shader will open automatically, showing a few different things on screen. First, we have the canvas, which contains all the nodes that make up your shader. You can scroll around by dragging on any empty area of the canvas. You can also zoom in and out by pinching any empty area of the canvas. This also works on non-empty areas, but you have to be careful that if you hold too long, you may end up dragging the node instead. By default, you start with the surface node, which is the endpoint for our shader, controlling the appearance of all surface attributes, such as color, roughness, metallic, and so on. On the bottom right, we have a preview of the shader's appearance, with the default sphere as a model. You can rotate and zoom using drag and pinch gestures. On the top right, there is a drop-down menu which allows you to create new nodes, undo or redo changes, open the reference manual, and close the shader. Another important part of the UI is the inspector. Tapping a node will automatically open this, allowing us to change a number of settings and input values on each node. Tap the surface node to get started. In the case of the surface node, we can change quite a few values. The diffuse input is essentially the base color of the shader. Roughness and metallic control how much light is reflected and in which way it's reflected. Changing these allows us to create different materials, like metal and plastic. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a node-based editor, and it wouldn't be much good if we just stayed with a single node. There are a few different options to create new nodes. First, we can try the library. To access this, we need to close the inspector, which can be done by dragging the tab at the top of the inspector downwards. As you can see, there are a number of options in the library for different nodes. Each one you can tap on to see a detailed description of what the node does and what inputs and options it has, as well as any outputs. We can then select a node and drag and drop this onto the canvas. The side panel itself can be dismissed or opened by dragging the tab on the right. The other way to add a node is to use the drop down menu and press create node. This will pop up with a search box letting you type in the name of the node you want. It will auto populate with the closest matches as you type making it quick to find any node that you want. We'll start by typing in texture. To create the node you can either press return on the keyboard or tap on the entry that you want to use. The texture comes pre-populated with a basic brick texture. We can now create a connection to pipe the output from the texture node into our surface node. Briefly hold down your finger on the RGB output of the texture node and drag this onto the diffuse input of the surface node. This will map the brick texture onto the surface color. If you want to remove the connection, simply tap and hold on the end of the connection, pull it away and release. Another thing we can do to, is alter the preview model. Tap on the sphere on the preview pane. This should open an inspector window to show the options available for the preview model. At the bottom of the inspector, there's a list of models that you can pick from. Try different ones to see what happens. A movement widget will also become available, allowing you to move the object around. Dragging on each of these axes will cause it to move in the direction that you want. You can also change the size of the preview by dragging the resize handle located at the top left of the preview panel, like this.
Another helpful UI element is the minimap, located at the bottom left of the window. This can be used to see a basic overview of the shader graph. Tapping on it will scroll the canvas view to that location. So if you scroll too far away and can't find where everything is, you can easily get your way back. This is it for now, I hope you enjoyed this first glimpse into Shade. We'll be exploring a lot more of this in the next video, where I'll show you how to create a basic hologram shader. Thanks guys.